ladies and gentlemen of the Ravens flock and NFL nation alike. My name is Christopher Linfont of BaltimoreFeather.com, and today we're going to review a guy uh, of the upcoming NFL draft here who's been uh, all over my Twitter timeline, and a lot of Ravens fans want to see in the purple and black next year, uh, and that is Hakeem Butler, wide receiver, redshirt junior out of Iowa State, entering the 2019 NFL draft. His draft stock is quickly climbing. A lot of people love him as a prospect, and today we're going to break down what I think of him uh, and whether or not the Ravens should draft him. But of course, if you're an NFL fan and a different team, uh, feel free to stay around. This is not just about the Ravens here. This is mainly about Hakeem Butler himself, the wide receiver, uh, and I'm just tailoring, your, tailoring it to the Ravens uh, and what I think that they should do with him at the end of the video. So stick around if you're a Ravens fan, and if, even if you're not a Ravens fan, stick around and watch uh, my, what I think of Hakeem Butler as we break down not only his his uh, measurables, uh, his stats, but also his film uh, here today. So the screen you're looking at here shows us what he did at the combine, what he weighed in as, what he measured as, and what he was able to do in the drills. Now, uh, he is a big time target. A lot of people think he is going to be a matchup nightmare in the NFL. Just look at him. He, first of all, he's from Baltimore, Maryland. So right then, you can see why a lot of Ravens fans want to bring Sheen Butler home. But he is 6'5", 227, 227 pounds, uh, 35 inch, 35 and a fourth inch arm length. All right, that's pretty darn big for a wide receiver, pretty long. And 10 and three fourths inch hands, that's, that's, those are big hands. He can catch footballs really well with those hands. Um, look at what he did at the combine. Uh, he clocks in a 4.48 40 yard dash, pretty good for a receiver his size. Um, 18 bench press reps, not great at all by any standards not great um but what i will say about that is you know he's trying to be more of a lean guy at his size and then more of a, a power guy maybe you know to break that speed down the field or just be a, a good wide receiver vertically um he's not trying to be a guy who's going to bully anybody um and and you get the vertical jump 36 inches broad jump 128 inches um so he has some pretty nice combine stats here very nice measurables, and he, you know, on paper should be a very good wide receiver uh, in the matchup realm. Now, we look at his stats, right? Ready? Look at his stats right here. Um, Iowa State, he spent four years there. Uh, he is a redshirt junior, so of course that redshirt year knocks off one of his years, uh, and that would be his official freshman year. He's redshirted the entire year. Uh, 2016, he plays in eight games, uh, only gets nine catches for 134 yards, two touchdowns, though. Um, not a great year, of course, for him. Didn't play in all the games. Uh, but then 2017 comes along. He plays in 13 games, so all the games. Uh, and he gets a lot more, more targets, more care, uh, catches. 14, uh, sorry, 14. 41 receptions, 697 yards, an average of 17 per catch, and 7 touchdowns. Um, and then, of course, 2018, his real breakout year, he grabs 60 passes. For 13, 18 yards, 22 average per catch. Okay, that's pretty good. Nine touchdowns. Um, so I think these stats are nice here. Um, not anything consistently amazing like a Nikhil Harry, but you can see that increase every year as he builds up more and more playing time, more and more targets, more and more success. Uh, pretty nice for Hakeem Butler. Um, overall, you know, what, what we know about him... Um, I think on paper is really good, but we have to take a look at his tape. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not super impressed with his tape. Okay, on paper, yeah, he looks like a pretty nice running uh, running back, wide receiver. But I'm not impressed with the tape. And let's take a look at the first piece of tape. This is the game against TCU. We're going to be looking at TCU, we're going to be looking at Iowa, and we're going to be looking at Texas. I picked these teams not only because the tape is available to me, um, but because these are some of the better teams that they would have played. TCU is more middle of the road probably, but Iowa, a better defense than you would see normally in the Big 12 where Hakeem Butler plays. And Texas, the, in my opinion, aside from Oklahoma, the best Big 12 team uh, he could face. Um, and they have a much better defense, I think, than anybody else in the Big 12. So we're going to look at teams that Hakeem Butler you know, maybe should do well against TCU and maybe shouldn't do so well against Texas. But he's, you're going to see what's weird about this, this, these performances here. Um, so let's skip ahead to the first play we're going to look at here, uh, and that's at the 207 mark. You can 
write this down if you want to here, uh, and then go back and look for yourself, right? And, and, and view these plays for yourself. I mean, you're going to see it right here, too. So, I mean, let me know what you think of these plays that and how I break them down. But let's just look at this play. Um, I picked this play because this is kind of symptomatic of what I see a lot in Hakeem Butler. Ready? Oh, so close. Oh, so close. That seems to be what Hakeem Butler does a lot of. Now, on this specific play, uh, it's DPI, it's called Defensive Pass Interference on 24. Um, so it's not entirely Hakeem Butler's fault on this play. He makes a good effort for it, but it's so many close passes. It's a drop. I mean, it's a drop. Let's be real. But it doesn't count, that drop. That drop doesn't count because, um, you know, the DPI, it's not entirely his fault here. So let's look at this next play. Uh, and why do I highlight this play? Um, well, we're going to see something similar here. He's up on the top of your screen, and he gets the pass, and... Uh, judge this one for yourselves. I don't know. Is this his fault, or is this the defensive back making a good play? I don't know. It's difficult to tell, on that angle at least. And I don't remember if we get another, we do get another angle. Let's take a look. He makes the cut inside, and I mean, this is a decent route, but he can't get off that corner. That defensive back has him the entire time. Look at, he even, when he turns, that, that D back just knows what he's going to do. And he's right there. Uh, and this quarterback is just doing a trust pass to Hakeem Butler mainly. This isn't like a get open throw. It's more of a trust pass. So, you know, not super explosive. We see that right away, you know, off the line. Right, he's not going to lose guys a lot. Um, you know, it's, I don't know if it's not exactly his fault here. I mean, again, it's tough on this one. Uh, but this is a lot of context, and he doesn't really seem to get away from this guy. Uh, let's go to the next play here. We're going to skip up towards the game. And I, I put this all in an order for you guys uh, that I think would be interesting to see. We're mainly focusing on his, his, his catching and his drop so far to start with. Uh, look, this play right here, Hakeem Butler... Uh, needs to make this catch, and it's just not done. It's just not done. And, you know, he's got the contact, right? The contact is there, but if you're going to be an NFL number one wide receiver, and a lot of guys think he should go in the first round, or he will go in the first round, a lot of people are saying, you have to make this catch. It's contested, I get it. But you're in front of the DB, you make that catch. I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a it's a lot of you know th this ball's contested. It's a lot of coverage. That guy's draped over him. But three in a row there. I mean, that we just looked at. Not good omens for Hakeem Butler. And this this game was not his best. Obviously, um, if we look at the game log, I'm not going to show you that. But I mean, this game was not his best uh, at all. But you know, he's got to make better plays. Uh, if he wants to be a number one wide receiver in the NFL, he's got to be able to do that. Um, and when we look at this next play here, at 628, if you're following along at home, um, here we go. Hakeem Butler, he looks like he's in the slot here. Um, I don't know exactly, I mean, I didn't know if I wanted to put this exact play on. Um, but just take a look at it. I mean, it's a contested drop again. And it's close. I mean, that's really close. Who's making the play? Is this a drop or is this... Is this this corner, or I'm sorry, linebacker here? And the ball was a little behind. But when you're dealing with a, a quarterback like Lamar Jackson, and, and no shade on Lamar Jackson, right? When you're dealing with Lamar Jackson, you're going to get passes that are going to come in like this. He's not the best passer in the world. We know that. This is no secret. You're going to get a pass like this. This is exactly what's going to happen next year. And if that's going to be the result, then Hakeem Butler's going to have a problem with the Ravens uh, to start with. Um, so we already established he's got a problem with dropping, uh, and we'll talk about that throughout here. This is a theme that happens a lot. Um, now, I want to take a look at his, you know, I mentioned he wasn't super explosive here, um, and, you know, the 448 speed or whatever he has, 448, uh, it, it should be a little bit more explosive, I think, than what we're seeing. I think he plays a little slower, because, I mean, this play, he gets a little separation, but he's not blowing, he never blows anybody by. He's never, like, just shooting past people. And, you know, it's not terrible. I mean, he gets a little separation. If that ball was any better, he would have probably made that catch and maybe not walked in the end zone. Um, but he's not blowing past people. If you're looking for a speed guy, it's not going to be Hakeem Butler. I'm, 
I don't really know what Hakeem Butler is, right? I don't dislike him as a wide receiver. I think in, when we see the Texas game, we, he seems to do some fantastic things. But he's not a possession guy. He's not a speedster. He's just kind of a mold. He's kind of like a bit flashier of a Chris Moore, right? The Ravens' Chris Moore. That's kind of how I see him so far. Um, you know, that's just what I see so far. Um, but let's let's get down and dirty here. Another function the Ravens are going to need from him, blocking ability. Can he block? Uh, and the answer, if you watch this play, is yeah, he can block. I mean, he's not the, a world-class blocker. It's a little bit sloppy on the bottom of your screen there, but he can block. There's no question in my mind uh, that he could he could do it for a Lamar Jackson offense. And, and and we look at, I mean, that's a good block, but I mean, he's a little inconsistent. And I, I, I you know, I'm trying to be as, as fairly evaluating this as possible. Um, but Nikhil Harry, if you watch my review, he does this blocking a lot better than Nikhil Harry does. That's, that's a little sloppy. I mean, maybe he just pushes him off because he knows that he's not going to go around him, but he's not driving that guy in, into the ground. You know, he's not or pushing him back. Um, but then, of course, we get um, him here with a good block, right? This play. This is a very good block. Look at this. Look at that. He just, no, pushes him away. This screen pass. You're going to probably see that next year with the Ravens because Lamar Jackson's going to, you know, be passing short if, as long, you know, he's developing. We don't expect him to shoot deep all the time. And, you know, Hakeem Butler could be useful in that kind of situation on the outside. I mean, it's very possible. And, and he does have nice good blocks, but he's inconsistent sometimes. Um, he's going to have to pick up his play, I think, uh, when we're talking about blocks, when we're talking about catches. Uh, and we're, of course, we're nowhere near done with this tape, uh, but we have a lot to talk about. Uh, with those two in particular, but you know, I want to just get off of them a little bit here and show you some other things I picked up on this tape. Uh, if we go a little bit further into the game here, right around here, uh, we see him, you know, he gets a catch, uh, and he's going to do something that a lot of wide receivers just won't do. Look at this. Push. Push, keep pushing, keep pushing. He doesn't really stop pushing. Sometimes guys, you know, even in college, will just go down, right? And you want guys who are fighters. I think Hakeem Butler is definitely a fighter. Maybe he's not the, the scrappiest fighter. Maybe he's not the best fighter. But he's a fighter, and he's going to fight hard. Um, so here he is, you know, pushes. And he, he's always pushing for extra yards. He's never going to give up yards. Doesn't go out of bounds easily. Um, and he's good with improv. And you can count that as improv, or you can count this as improv. Right here on the bottom of your screen, he's running her out. And then watch what this quarterback does. Decides, oh, I gotta take off and run. And then when we get to see King Butler right there, what's he doing? He's blocking, and that quarterback gets 10 extra yards because of what Hakeem Butler does with that the corner. Maybe 15 extra yards. If Hakeem Butler's not stopping that guy, if he's not aware, he's good at improv. He's very aware, and I'll give him that. He's extremely aware on the field. Um, and he knows what's coming, he knows what everybody's doing, and he knows what to do in, in a lot of situations, including this QB scramble, which. If you know the Ravens' offense and what it's going to be next year, you know that QB scrambles are going to be everywhere. Lamar Jackson's going to be running the ball quite often next year just because of his sheer speed and what he can do as an athlete. Um, but that wraps up what we see in Hakeem Butler's TCU tape right here. Not very impressive, I must say. I was you know, hearing a lot about Hakeem Butler. This tape, I'm not very confident in what I see in this tape, but maybe he gets better in Iowa. Okay, so here's the Hakeem Butler Iowa tape. Now, we're going to start with a play uh, pretty early in the game here. At the 115 mark on our video, 731, I'm sorry, 652. Uh, you can see him, I think he is the slot here, uh, and he's paired up with this guy right here. Um, and we see something that's, you know, not great. Now, I'm not talking about the catch, you know, the failed catch, I'm not talking about the pass. Talking about the fact he gets tied up by this corner. I mean, what's going on? Why is this number 27? Why is he able to tie up Hakeem Butler? Hakeem Butler is supposed to be this matchup nightmare. He can't get around this guy who's obviously shorter than him. Right? I mean, maybe not by a whole lot. But Hakeem Butler, again, maybe comes down to that strength, the size, right? He's got the height. But he doesn't really have the strength to push guys, 
you know, and to get, you know, balls like that. And, again, I don't really know what he is. He's not a possession guy. He's not a push-you-around guy. He's not a speed guy. He's just there. He's kind of a mix between everything. And it's not like he excels at, at all of them. He's good in all aspects, but he's not, like, excelling in all these aspects. It's just like he's there. He's not... I mean, it's hard to describe. I mean, maybe you guys understand what I'm trying to say, but it's very hard for me to describe that th- this feeling of of him just being kind of everything, but not excelling at any of it or one of it. Right? He's just a bit of everything. Um, and now we get to take look at his drops. Uh, look at this. Like, are you, do the Ravens really want to draft another guy who's dropping balls? I was watching. I think it was the Chris Sims NBC sports thing on YouTube yesterday, and they said that Hakeem Butler had a 16% drop rate of catchable balls. 16%. Are we sure we want this with Lamar Jackson or any quarterback, really? Do the Ravens want to bank the future of the receiving core on a guy who's dropping balls? I mean, a lot of people think Hakeem Butler should be picked in the first round. And without spoiling the end of the results here, it's not looking that way to me. He's still a good athlete. He makes good plays. When we look at Texas, you'll see why I think he's got a lot of upside. Um, but, I mean, these are plays that the Ravens can't afford to miss. These are, I mean, you can't have a guy who's going to be dropping 16% of everything that comes to him. That's just not good. I'm sorry, that's just not good. It's just not acceptable for a guy who's supposed to be your number one wide receiver. It's not acceptable. If he was playing a role, Chris Moore or Seth Roberts was playing, I'd maybe be okay with it, you know, because he's not your number one. Well, when you have a number one wide receiver, he needs to catch 90 to 95% of what's coming at him. Not 85, not 80, 90 to 95, maybe more like 95. I mean, maybe it's, maybe my expectations are too high, but he has, Hakeem Butler definitely has draft problems, and they're not just contested catches like we saw in the last game. They're wide open catches like this out route. Nobody's there to stop him. Nobody. All you have to do is grab that and it goes right through his hands. That's just not acceptable for a wide receiver of what we're saying he should be picked at. Now, let's go up with, you know, what he can do. Let's, you know, as Bill Belichick says, you know, focus on what he can do, not what he can't do. Here's what he can do. Watch this play. Similar play. Basically the same route, right? It's that out route. And this one, he catches. And he holds on to it after getting hit. So can he make catches? Absolutely. He can absolutely make catches. But he's not going to do it every play. Um, Another example of this. Let's go down into the next part of the game. All the way near the end here at the 6... Basically the 6.04 mark. This is not him. This is not him. Actually, that is him. Um, I'm sorry. I did see this play. Maybe maybe I'll show it. I, I saw this play the other... When I was watching it the other day. Um, and I thought to myself, I can't put this on. It's not a Hakeem Butler drop here. The ball is just behind him. I mean, that's just a bad throw. And Iowa, Iowa State didn't really have quarterbacks that are going to be able to make extremely accurate throws. But that's just way behind him. That's not his fault. Um, but this is the play I wanted to show you. So we saw a drop, an excusable drop. Great catch. Uh, now watch this play. What are we going to see here? Like, are you kidding me? How do you, I could catch that? I could catch that. I mean, I'm not trying to like belittle Hakeem Butler. I'm not trying to blow things out of proportions. It's just that coming from a team that has had so much failure at the wide receiver position, and drafting it. I mean, this just is this is Brashad Perryman on tape. I mean, look at this. This is Brashad. This is a not fast Brashad Perryman to me. I mean, Hakeem Butler, I'm sure, could be a great player at a good, like, pick. If we're talking, like, the third round, Hakeem Butler would be an excellent pick in the third round. He's got a lot of upside. The Texas game, you're going to see what he can do, what he can really do. We're going to see some fireworks there. But as a first-round guy, I mean, this, if this is what we're going to get, I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't know. What we're gonna get out of him, uh, and let's let's take another look at one more play here. We see this, and then boom, good catch. Basically the same kind of play. The other it was in 
middle of the field, open. This one's middle of the field, open. One he drops, one he catches. The inconsistencies are there. Hakeem Butler has to make up his mind on what he is going to be and if he's going to be a possession guy or is he going to be a, a speedster. Is he going to be a big body guy? We don't know. And he's not merely making a lot of catches that are telling me, you know, that he has to be drafted in the first round. He's not, he doesn't have that consistency. I'm always looking for like a value of a player. He has a lot of value as a third or fourth rounder. Second rounder, maybe. Maybe the end of the second round, I can see it. A first rounder, absolutely not. I've ruled that out of the options here for, for Hakeem Butler because these drops, I mean, focus on what he can do and not what he can't do. Yeah, but you have to know what he can't do because the you know, if he can't do something then you that you need, you can't draft him high. And a lot of people want to draft him high. I just I can't see it. I cannot see Hakeem Butler being drafted in the first round. Um, even with the Texas tape, I'm about to show you. Again, fireworks in this Texas tape. Um, and let's get some things out of the way first. Let's get the blocks because I still want to show you the blocking ability. He's got it, but it's inconsistent. Um, but we're going to get this out of the way real quick here before we go into the fireworks. Um, here he is at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you can kind of see it at the edge, and then here comes. Look at that, how he holds that block. He held that for what? This play starts at 112 on our video here, and it he loses his block at what? 117, 116? That's a four or five second block. For a wide receiver, that's pretty good. Um, and Texas has a very nice defense for a Big 12 team. They're one of the better all around Big 12 teams. I think the second best Big 12 team behind Oklahoma. Um, so, again, he can block. He does it inconsistently, though. Um, but let's take a look. I mean, this is his best game I saw on tape. This is his absolute best game. There he is, number 18, the top of your screen. That's a good block, but this just falls apart. I don't know what this quarterback... I mean, this quarterback play, not impressed at all. Not impressed at all with this quarterback play. Um, but you can see him at the top of your screen making a very nice block, uh, but the play breaks down. It's just not his fault on that one. But he makes a nice block uh, regardless. Um... Now let's move on to his catches. This is what you came to see, right? I'm being a little nitty-gritty with, with what he can do um, and what he can't do, but you came to see catches. Here we go. Hakeem Butler can catch the ball, and he can do it well. Let's look at this curl route. Nice. He falls down, though. Um, not going to really fault him. I want to see that he can catch the ball. I, I've seen that he can run with it before. In those other plays we watched where he did catch it and started to run with it, he fell for yards. We saw he could do it. He can catch the ball. In this game, he really understands that you got to catch it. See how he just hauls it in with his body? He grabs it and pulls it in. Right? That's what we want to see as a wide receiver. We don't want to see, oh, let me just grab it with my hands and hold it out like a Prashad Perryman would do. Or, oh, let me just run with it before I catch it. No. This, this play, he gets it. He doesn't, he doesn't, you know, he maybe had room to get it and go. Um, but he gets that he has to catch the ball, and that's the number one anything he has to do as a wide receiver before thinking about anything else he has to catch that ball and it gets him a first down so that's a good play um now if we want to see some fireworks here um this is an interesting play i don't really know if it's in bounds and you'll see why i say that in a second here um this is a fantastic catch watch the toe tap on the sideline right here mm. i mean i think it's in bounds is it in bounds it's not in bounds i think it is not entirely sure but you can see here his awareness, he turns and he tries to get it down immediately. So you know he's thinking about it. Maybe he doesn't execute it perfectly on this. Maybe he only gets one foot down in the NFL that may not count. But he's following the college rule as he knows immediately. He's turning because he's trying to get those toes down before he catches it. He has that awareness, which I think is fantastic for Hakeem Butler, that awareness. One of his better strengths uh, is awareness. He's very aware on the field. And here he is right here in a close-up. Is this in bounds? Uh, it's close. But I still think it's a good catch, regardless if it was inbounds or not. He made a good effort. And he's being pushed, so it's difficult to make this catch. But he makes a really good effort, and he shows you, you know, what he can do. Um, and now let's move up to, not this play, but the next play. This one right here. Boom. That one's inbounds. That one's inbounds. Okay. Let's take a look at this from another angle here. What the heck? I mean, this is just ridiculous. He's starting to put off, put on a show down here, right? 
Like, are you kidding me? Like, it's difficult to make this catch. It's very difficult to make this catch. And Hakeem Butler does it right there. But again, it's all these great catches paired with drops. And I don't know, I mean, is it a concentration thing? Is it just an inability? I mean, I think it's personally, I think it's a concentration issue. I think he's not completely concentrated on the ball here, on his catch. I mean, when you see he is, with that first curl play I showed you, he is concentrated because he's not trying to get away. Um, he just goes down immediately after catching it. He gets the first down. The other play, he didn't get in bounds. I don't. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. The one he was kind of shaking on. Um, he concentrates on that. He turns his body. He's ready to get the toe tap, right? He's just focusing on the catch and nothing but the catch, right? Making sure this ball is caught in bounds. That one, same thing. When he does that, he does it very well. But when he's thinking about maybe running it, or, you know, he's in the open field, it's just not exactly what we're looking for. It's just lots of drops and inaccuracies and inconsistencies and, and, and that of the sort. A lot of that we see throughout his tape. Um, so he, maybe it's he's got to concentrate more. I don't know what. Um, but, you know, I think it's the need to concentrate. But, I mean, I don't know what's going on in his head. Um, and, again, but he shows some very nice promise in this Texas game. I mean, a lot of promise. And here he is on this play. I mean, you know, this is a great catch. Great fight. He gets outnumbered. You'll see what I mean in a second here. A little bit of improv. But, I mean, look at that. He did a, he had a very similar route. I believe it was in either the one of the two games we looked at a few minutes ago. Right? A similar route, and he dropped it in that route. I think it was TCU. And you look at this play. And you say, wow, here he is catching it. And he's, fight again, fighting for extra yards. You'd like to see that in a wide receiver. He catches that one. So he can do it. He can definitely do it. The question is, why didn't he do it? And the other two, was it concentration? Was it just a lack of skill? I think it's concentration. Maybe not. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm not. Um, but he can do it. And he's got a lot of upside. Uh, and when we look at the end of this tape here, we've got one more play to go over. Here we go, looking at these kind of plays again. All these great plays, and this is what the last play we're going to look at is. Dropped. Needs to make that plain and simple. That's got to be a concentration drop. I mean, he has it in his hands, and he just loses it. It's a decent spiral. I mean, it's high, but he's got to catch that. He's six foot five. He's got that huge arm length. A lot of guys love the matchup that he's going to create. They love the measurables on him. But if he's not going to use that height and he's not going to use those arms the way he has to, what does it mean? What does it matter if he can't do it, if he just can't use it, right? The inconsistency is what bothers me the most with him. Flat out, the inconsistencies are my biggest concern with Hakeem Butler. Look, when we talk about his strengths and his weaknesses, obviously he's a super aware player. He basically knows what's going on in the field from any position, he's he's able to adjust pretty quickly. He's a smart guy. He makes good plays, uh, very aware. He's a playmaker. There's no question about it. On paper, he's a mismatch, right? He's versatile. As you saw throughout the, the tape we watched, uh, he made a lot of different routes. He ran them very well, all the routes. Um, no problem on the routes. Uh, and for his size, he's pretty fast, and he can do a lot of things for his size. Uh, and he look, he's willing to block, right? He doesn't always do it well, but he's willing to block, and that's going to be key for a Lamar Jackson offense. Uh, and, of course, he's got that full route tree, I think, that we really didn't have to – we didn't see, like, you know, routes missing. When we looked at DK Metcalf, I said he ran, like, four routes. He ran a go, a screen, a, a slant, and something else, a curl or something, and that was it. He ran, runs, you know, post routes, uh, out routes, comeback routes, go routes – um, corner routes, you know, basically everything we needed to see to give me the indication, screens, everything we needed to see to give me the indication to do all the routes, it's fine. Um, but when you look at his weaknesses, uh, the drops. It's the drops, it's the inconsistencies that give me the concern, that tell me he can't be a first round player. 16% uh, drop rate again. A 16% drop rate. If you draft a guy to be your number one wide receiver, you can't have him drop 16% everything that he is able to catch I mean this is not just quarterback threw him away these are I couldn't catch that I couldn't grab it right 
and again, he's a smart player. He's a very aware player, but he something about the concentration. I mean, maybe it's an easy fix in the NFL. Maybe it's a very easy fix. It very well could be. But he didn't do it in college. Why do I have to assume now he's going to do it in the NFL? Um, and look, he made great plays throughout college. This is just the tape we selected. Maybe the tape we selected was too harsh on him. But maybe not. Maybe we have to look at the harshness of these this tape and think to ourselves, when he gets opponents that are better than Iowa, that are better than Texas, that are better than, way better than TCU, what's he going to do? And I don't know. Again, the Big 12, he goes against terrible defenses. There's no secret that the Big 12 defenses suck. I mean, there was a, what was it, the Oklahoma and West Virginia game or something, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, something like that, um, where they went really high in, like, almost in the 70s, I think, this past year, if I remember correctly. I remember watching a game like that. Uh, there's just little defense in the conference. It, it's, you know, m- the matchups are almost always favorable to him. In the NFL, you're not going to get corners who are going to be pushed over like they might be in the Big 12. And I'm not saying, you know, all corners in the Big 12, but a lot of corners, a lot of guys would just not compare to what the size, the, sp- the speed, the overall match- matchup problem that Hakeem Butler is. Um, again, you know, the inconsistency, though, regardless of how, of what he played against in college, I think it's the inconsistency that is the problem with Hakeem Butler. Uh, he can definitely become a very good player in the NFL, but as a first rounder, I don't think he's a first rounder. I think his grade is about a six point seven out of out of uh, ten. I gave him to Keel Harry an eight point six. I give gave DK Metcalf an eight. I'm giving him a six point seven. I think he should be drafted probably in the early third round, but maybe the late second. Maybe the late second. I could see it. Um, I think you have a lot of value as a third or fourth round guy. As a fourth rounder, you got to pick him immediately because. What we saw at Texas, I mean, in the matchup he brings, he's, he could be a very good player. As a fourth rounder, he'd be a bargain, but as a first rounder, absolutely not. I, I, can't, I can't commit a team to draft him in the first round based on what I saw on that tape. You know, and I understand that a lot of guys in the Ravens flock want Hakeem Butler more than anybody, but the inconsistencies, I mean, if you get him in the third round, by all means, if he's there in the third round, even if we draft, like, Nikhil Harry or A.J. Brown or even D.K. Metcalf in the first. If he's there at the third round we're picking, go for him because we need wide receivers, and in the third round, the value matches up. First round value does not match up there. Um, boom or bust, if he's picked in the first round, he's not going to be a boom. He, he might not be a bust, but he's not going to be a boom in the first round. He could be a boom in the third or fourth round, maybe even in the late second. He would trend more towards the bus as a first rounder because I don't expect him right away to be a number one guy he might need some training he might need some time to figure out what has to change in his transition from college to NFL it's going to be very different for him Um, so I don't think as a first round player he would be a boom but not necessarily a bust he'd maybe trend toward a bust but I don't think he'd be a bust Um, should the Ravens get him Third round pick, again, I have no problem in the third round. If you want to go get him in the third round, go get him in the third round. That's no problem there. First round, no thank you. Uh, Final thoughts, again, he did well against mediocre defenses occasionally. The tape we watched wasn't fantastic for him against mediocre defenses, but the Texas game, I think, really bailed him out. Um, I don't know what he's going to do when he's given a real challenge, though. Well, I mean, like, in in our division, right, Steelers' defense is Block, Bengals is kind of block right now. The Cleveland Browns defense has some players though. I'd like to see him go up against some of the top guys. In practice, you know, if he is drafted by the Ravens, let's say Marlon Humphrey, what would he do against Marlon Humphrey? We'd get indicators pretty quickly against how he'd fare in the NFL. Um, but he doesn't have the the wherewithal, the, the the winning the big matchups. He didn't really do enough for me based on what I saw. To really tell me he, he's he's worthy of a first round pick, in all honesty, because and again we don't really know what he is. He's not a speed guy. He's not a possession guy. He's not a big body guy who's going to push you around. He's a bit of everything, but doesn't excel anywhere. He's good in all those areas. He's got the ability, but he doesn't really, you know, do it at an extremely you know well pace. Doesn't really focus on one area. Doesn't excel at one area. And these are all things that might be problems in the NFL. Um, the dropping, though, is the biggest concern I have. We cannot afford another wide receiver that drops the ball. 
give me somebody who just catches the ball. With Lamar Jackson at the helm, you know, you're not going to get the most accurate passes in the world. You're going to get some things behind you. You're going to get some bobble catches. Just catch the ball. I don't care if you can run a 4 2 2 versus a 4 8 1 or a 4 9. Catch the ball. That's the biggest, biggest, biggest concern I have. You got to catch the ball. And Hakeem Butler doesn't really do that at a rate that I think would merit a number one wide receiver in the NFL. Uh, but maybe he can change my mind once he gets to the NFL. If the Ravens draft him, I'll root for him and see what he can do. Uh, but I don't think it would be a very great idea to get him in the first round of this year's NFL draft. Um, that concludes today's episode of our Draft Prospect Review. Uh, make sure to tune in to the next one. will be A.J. Brown as per user request. And, of course, you guys can send me whatever ever user uh, request you have. If you want to see... Um, you know, if you want to see a player, you know, from any school, any position, just hit me up. And if I if I agree with you that that'd be a good guy to look at for a Ravens pick, uh, even it could be a seventh round or an undrafted potential guy, I'll take a look at him if I like him. Uh, so anyway, send in all your uh, viewer submitted um, um, picks, and I'll make sure to look at them. Uh, so this is Chris Linfont signing out for BaltimoreFeather.com. Uh, after our Hakeem Butler prospect review, make sure to check out all the other prospect reviews on BaltimoreFeather.com or here on the YouTube channel. Uh, Again, this is Chris Linfont signing out.